So this is the new 2014 Moto X. It's also my first Moto X, and I gotta tell you, aside from the various Google Play Edition phones that we've seen in the past, I feel like this is how Android should be on phones. What's up everyone, Jared back, and I actually say that last statement with a little hesitation because as much as I like how the software feels, there's still some things I'm not a huge fan of, but before I go any further into the software, Let's talk about the hardware look and feel first. Uh, the Moto X sports a metal band, which as a lot of people, including myself, will say adds to the high build quality feel. And while it's quite comfortable to hold in the hand when tapping on the screen thanks to its curved back, I found that because of the shape of that metal band, it wasn't actually very comfortable to hold during long phone calls. On the front is a 5.2 inch display with bezels that leaves a respectfully small footprint. And as many of you probably already know, those aren't dual front facing stereo speakers. Uh, the bottom speaker is the only one that'll be playing your tunes. That said, it's actually a surprisingly satisfactory speaker. I mean, when it comes to my favorite single speaker device, the Oppo Find 7 would have to be my choice, but this is pretty damn close. And the speakers actually lift the display off of surfaces if it's face down. And seeing as there's no lip around the screen, it's kind of a good thing. All your buttons are placed on the right side. And I gotta tell you, I love how they gave the power button some texture. It's such a small thing that makes such a huge difference difference, at least to me. But then again, I'm pretty anal when it comes to small details like that. The back, again, is curved for ergonomics, and we've also got a 13 megapixel rear shooter with what Motorola tried to make seem like a ring flash, but in actuality, it's just a ring reflector that has two LEDs in it that don't actually light up the whole ring because there really isn't any reflector type materials in it. Uh, below the camera though is the Motorola logo, and for some reason it moves around on my device, and while in phone calls, I find my finger falls on the logo and I start playing with it because it just moves around, which kind of annoys me, but it's not a deal breaker or anything like that for me. Okay, so enough about its sexy looks. Uh, the software experience on the Moto X has been awesome for me. Um, I mean, it's pretty much all but stock Android with just a few software enhancements here and there. And what seemed to have migrated over from the previous generation Moto X is actually what stood out to me the most on this new version. Like giving your wrist a couple of twists to launch the camera and all the neat features in the Moto app, including but certainly not limited to the active display, or as Motorola seemed to rename it, Moto Display, which by the way, if you weren't aware, pulses notifications on the display when your phone's sitting idle. And this is actually one of the big software feature draws of this phone, because instead of seeing a flashing notification light and wondering if it's just an app update or an important email, it shows what the app notification's for, and when you tap and hold on its respective app icon, it'll show you that notification in more detail. And what's more, because the Moto X has an AMOLED display, it's only lighting up the pixels that you see so it's not a battery drainer at all. Uh, that is to say, as long as you don't have approach from motor display turned on, which actually uses the four IR sensors stationed at all four corners of the front of the phone to detect when you're reaching for it or waving your hand in front of it to silence calls or snooze your alarm. And that's sort of actually one of the things that I'm not a fan of. Uh, yes, I like motor display, but the lack of ability to set the frequency of the notification pulses is irritating to say the least, at least for me anyways. Um, notification lights can get annoying, but man, so can a reasonably large notification icon popping up every five to six seconds. But to be honest, I'd take motor display over notification light any day. And thanks to the still relevant and more than capable Snapdragon 8L1 and the two gigs of RAM that complement the light stock Android feeling, uh, you'll be hard pressed to find any lag. I mean, the stock animation speeds could use a bit of a bump, but that's not lag or delay, that's just eye candy. And although I'm an impatient person and would prefer to have windows, apps, and folders open in the blink of an eye, as long as there's no lag or delays, it actually sort of adds to the controlled smooth feeling of it all. And as I mentioned before, the screen features a big, beautiful AMOLED display coming in at 5.2 inches with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a PPI of 424. And while we're now living in the age of quad HD displays with insane amounts of pixels, I'm not surprised or upset with a 1080p display, but it does force you to sort out your mobile device's needs and priorities, considering that for another 100 bucks, you can get yourself an LG G3 or a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and have the latest in mobile display technology. And as far as display color and quality goes, uh, using Display Tester, I can see that there's some slight color banding when colors get darker, but really not enough to be concerned with. Uh, black contrast seems to be just fine, but white contrast seems to be quite off with a few colors. Black saturation is way too saturated, but at the same time, AMOLED displays produce the blackest black, so some people might not mind that. Uh, it just means you might be missing out when watching darker lit scenes in movies and TV shows, for example. However, white saturation seems to be bang on, with the only step I'm not able to see being 255. Uh, now, the gamma calibration is totally off, but again, 
It's an AMOLED display, so there's really no surprise there. And finally, viewing angles are actually really, really good. I don't see much color wash until I hit unrealistic viewing angles, and even then, it's only slight. So battery life. Uh, well, the Moto X houses a non-removable 2300 milliamp hour battery, and after my heavy usage testing, I managed to only get three hours of screen on time, which really isn't that great. Like, for example, the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Although it has a smaller display in both size and resolution, it only comes with an 1860 milliamp hour battery, and with it, I got just under three hours of screen on time, and that's with TouchWiz and a bunch of carrier bloatware, whereas the Moto X, at least my Moto X, didn't come with any. So battery life, not to mention capacity, could have been considerably better, but heavy usage testing is a worst case scenario type test, so with average or light usage, you really shouldn't have too much trouble getting through the day and putting it back on the charger by late evening. And finally, when it comes to the cameras, uh, no, they're not the best out there right now, but they're certainly not the worst. Uh, pictures taken, to my eyes at least, don't really pop, and the dynamic range just isn't there the way it is in Samsung or LG phones, for example. But they are clear, they can be sharp, and with a good third-party camera app, they can even be great. But a lot of camera shortcomings can be addressed with just a few manual controls of which the Moto X camera app features none of. Well, that is to say it does have a one-size-fits-all focus and exposure setting, but it's just a drag-and-drop type feature, which is a system that just doesn't work. And when it comes to low-light scenes, I've seen some phone cameras take some pretty bad low-light pictures, and the Moto X is right up there with them. So, let's put it this way. I've really enjoyed using the Moto X. The display size is my sweet spot. I absolutely love the stock Android feeling and how bloody well this device performs. All the software enhances that make the Moto X stand out from the rest, like Moto Display for example, certainly don't go unappreciated, and it looks and feels like an awesome piece of tech. But the battery life is definitely something that needs improvement, and as far as the cameras are concerned, yeah, they could have used some better hardware, or at the very least, some manual controls, but really, they could have done a lot worse. And to me, in good lighting, the picture quality is more than sufficient. So. All in all, no huge complaints, although it really would have been nice if it came with an IR blaster. In fact, I'd trade all four of those IR sensors for just one IR blaster. The Moto X definitely earned a spot in my heart, but with some sacrifices, so I'm actually interested to know what your thoughts are on the Moto X, and if you could choose right now, would you make the Moto X your next phone? <sighs> well, I think that about wraps it up for this one, uh, but keep an eye out, and maybe even subscribe for more videos real soon, because we got the Galaxy Note 4 already out, and the Nexus 6 in just a couple of weeks, so plenty more where this came from. Uh, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit up that like button, uh, but thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers. This video is sponsored by UnlockThatPhone.com. Unlock any phone, any carrier, worldwide. Visit UnlockThatPhone.com for more information.